I'm well aware of the generic sales pitch that people usually give for containers. It works on my machine, reproducible builds, blah blah blah. Plenty of YouTubers have had millions of views by raving on about the benefits of containers. Can you believe this guy? I would totally have my silver play button by now if I sold out like this. It's definitely not that he actually knows what he's talking about and speaks properly and has awesome animations. Well, actually my most popular video by far also talks about containers, and I thought I was already being controversial. But some of the people in the comments felt that containers were overkill for what I was doing. The whole concept of containers is kind of weird if you think about it. Once you have the executable program in the computer's physical RAM, any CPU with the same architecture will produce the same result. It should work on anyone's machine. Different underlying architectures also cause the it works on my machine issue with containers, just like they do with binaries. I've seen it firsthand when moving from Intel to ARM. If I write a simple program in C and compile it on my computer, I'm confident that any computer with the same CPU architecture will execute it with the same result. I just have to include any and all dependencies with my binary. But space isn't free, and there's hundreds or maybe even thousands of binaries on my computer that all depend on libc. It doesn't make sense for every single one of those binaries to include their own version of libc. Most of them will just assume it's on my computer and use the one that's there. I can use SDL to create a window, and none of the SDL code is in my code base, but it's still somewhere on my computer. If I send this compiled binary to someone else and any of the dependencies aren't on their computer, or if the version is different enough to change behavior, we're back at the it works on my machine issue. So looking at this problem, the obvious solution is to ship an entire operating system in a virtual machine with every single deployment. What? We had the answer right there. This problem is already solved. Just add the dependencies to the binary and it will work fine. You're including them as well in the container, but also adding an operating system, a VM, and a bunch of shit you don't need just for the same code to be loaded into the same RAM and run on the same CPU. It basically comes down to two questions. One, is there anything preventing us from distributing a single executable that includes all dependencies? And two, is there any additional benefit containers provide that can justify their overhead? Pick a random number between one and 10. Go ahead, I'll wait. Pathetic. I knew you would pick 7. Try to be original next time. You know what else is terrible at picking random numbers? Yeah, the CPU. Sometimes we just need a little help from the operating system. There's just more entropy up there. On Linux, the operating system provides slash dev slash random and slash dev slash u random, which are dependencies that provide high quality random number generators. The kind that you need for cryptography. You cannot statically link this dependency because it's provided by the operating system at runtime. Even if you have the same program running on the same CPU, the operating system can affect the output. There are also other, more nuanced reasons why you may not be able to include a dependency in a single binary. Dependencies with viral copyleft licenses like GPL and LGPL are tricky to include when all dependencies are resolved at compile time. It's much easier to let the user swap out a dependency later if it's resolved at runtime as is required by LGPL. Other times, it's just not in the spirit of the ecosystem you're in. How would I distribute this Python script that depends on NumPy as a single executable, or this Java app that needs a correct Java runtime environment installed? So the answer to the first question is yes. But unless you're running microservices, which 99% of people don't need to do, you will always have to make some sort of decision about what operating system your application is running on. There's no way that you cannot guarantee slash dev slash random will be on the host computer. Copy left licenses are just as frustrating to deal with when statically linking as when building containers. The truth is that when distributing private software, you always have to be careful with licensing. And you can distribute a Python script as a single executable. You just include all the dependencies. Same thing with Java. If you really wanted to, you could ship the executable with the JRE you want included. And that's still less overhead than a container. So the answer to this question is more of a yes-ish. The overhead, if you use an Alpine container, is 3.6 megabytes. Yeah, I really love Alpine. But the overhead of containers is much more than that. It's the additional tooling you need to understand, the extra piece that can go wrong. It's the startup cost on every single job and deployment. It's the added layer whenever you want to see what's actually going on with your process or communicate with other processes. 
So what else do containers give us then? Well, you get to set environment variables, which could be done with the simple bash script, an isolated file system, which could be done with virtual files, the ability to orchestrate multiple processes or system CTL, find control over resources, fair, but in bytecode languages, you can do that through the VM, cache layers for builds, which is actually very helpful, and options for telemetry by using sidecars, which you can just do inside of your application. The thing about these advantages is that none of them are particularly impressive on their own, but together they make containers just that little bit nicer to pass around and deploy, especially if you have many services running at once. It moves the burden of managing all these things like environment variables, file systems and telemetry away from your application and onto an external thing that you can just apply to many services. I hate them both but I would rather use Kubernetes than systemd to orchestrate many resilient services. Many people don't need microservices, but most people still deploy multiple things. And at any scale, containers are far easier to work with than the alternative. Containers are also a common language. It's a universal format that you can give to any cloud provider or software engineer, and they can get it up and running without much effort. This is by far the best feature containers provide and why their popularity has justifyingly exploded. If you only have a few services and you can compile to a single binary, then you can save on memory footprint, cold start time and overall dependencies by just shipping the binary. I think that's worth considering. But if you want to integrate with popular tooling and manage multiple services, then containers will make your life so much easier. I must say that containers are inherently not reproducible though, since they have side effects. If you need actual reproducible builds, then you can go one step further and use Nixflex, but that's out of scope for this video. Containers are a tool that's definitely worth having around. They don't do anything particularly unique or groundbreaking, but they're just so much more convenient. So do you really need a container? I don't know, use whatever you like. Honestly, this video is so different to anything I've made before. I really came into it expecting to prove that containers are just another overhyped and bloated technology. But the more I researched, the more I realized that's simply not true. I do think it's still worth questioning my assumptions though, and sharing my discoveries for others to hopefully enjoy. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. I'm working on a few more videos about software engineering and development. Thank you for watching.